Greetings guys, my name is The Adipose and this in front of you is Doctor Who Legacy. In this video um, we're going to be talking about the maths behind the game mechanics and exploring what will give you the best combination of gems for each situation. Okay, so this video is Doctor Who Legacy Maths. Um, I make no apologies here. We're going to be talking numbers. Uh, we're going to be talking about um, kind of fractions and things like that um, because I this is so. This is an advanced tutorial. Um, you need to uh, you need to have an understanding of the game. Hopefully, you've seen my my basic gems tutorial, my basic character tutorial, my advanced gems tutorial, and my advanced character tutorial before you have a look at this one because this one's going to go uh, perhaps to the next stage of gameplay where you really can't start start thinking about you know what is going to be the right thing for me to do. Um, in this particular situation and um, to help us understand this idea of um, the maths behind the game um, I have been looking very much at a fantastic website if I just take you over um, called uh, which is the the Doctor Who Legacy or Wikia um, site I'm gonna put the the link in the description below but it, I, as far as I can tell at the moment this is the most informative um, site out there you've got uh, descriptions of almost all characters oh, in fact, it may even be all of them um, so for example you go in here and it'll tell you kind of what color they are it'll tell you what power they've got it'll tell you what type they are you know whether they're kind of like balanced or healer or offensive um so if you're looking if you're if you're that kind of person that kind of thinks well or which what which way do i level up each character it's quite useful to come in here and kind of see you know if, if they kind of classify them as a tank meaning health or a, or a, um, a dps character meaning attack and things like that so there's just loads and loads of good stuff here i will put the link in the description but what we're going to be looking at um today um, is the section here called combat mechanics um, where they've really gone into de into detail about um, what happens when you actually put some gems together and they've actually got the full formula here um, for how the the damage is calculated now don't worry um, we aren't going to be going like properly into exactly you know how that kind of formula works but if you want to do it go and have a look at the link and you can see exactly what's there but what I'm going to be doing is kind of stripping it down um, just um, a little bit so let let's talk about it um, in front of you um, you can see um, Brian Williams and I am going to um, just break a little rule here in terms of my upgrading and I'm just going to put one point um, into his um, attack and you should see now in the top top right hand corner of your screen his attack is now 39 I'm going to call that 40 okay it's close enough to 40 that I'm going to call it 40 now what happens is when I make a string of yellow gems three yellow gems because remember that's the the minimum you need to attack when I put three yellow gems together the enemies or the the, the enemy sorry that I have selected or the furthest enemy on the left will take 40 damage okay so it's not 40 damage per gem that I've put together um, and it's not um, 40 damage uh, you know whether I put four or five together or that but it's it's three gems equals the damage that your character has in this case for Brian Williams we're gonna say um, that it's 40 now obviously if I have more than one yellow character and things like that it's gonna change um, if I get any kind of combos it's gonna change um, if I do more than three gems, it's gonna change we're gonna come to all of that but at the basic level you put three gems together and you get the base damage, uh, the base attack um, that your character has. So, so if I just show you another character, for example, let's go all up to let's go all the way up to my highest damaging character at the moment, who I think is um, um, this, the whoops, the Spoonhead Doctor. His attack is 603. So three gems together gives me 603 with him so far. Still with me? Okay. Now this is where it starts to get complicated because what happens is. As you add in more gems, so you instead of doing three in a row, you do four in a row, or you do five in a row, what happens is, is it adds on 25%, or let's say a quarter of that damage again. So um, let, let, let's take it into a natural kind of uh, game game example, and let's see, uh, let, let's put together a team. Have I got a team that's got a few balanced ones? Yeah, if I just swap out um, Amy here um, for our Mr. Williams. Very nice indeed. And we will head into series season. Oops, no, look too, too too strong. Let's go season seven, and then let's go somewhere fairly near the start because obviously what we're looking for here is um, examples rather than devastations. And um, so if I was to put together um, the three gems, oh here we go. This is a, this is going to be a fantastic example for us here because we've actually got quite a few yellow gems on the board. Now it would be very very easy for him for me here to just stick a yellow gem on the end of. Um, that string of um, of yeah of three yellows to make four in a row. So let's think about what's going to happen there. 
If I every gem I add on to the end of there is going to give me plus 25%. So he's doing 40 damage. So a quarter of 40 is obviously 10. So if I stick on um, another uh, gem on the end there, I'm going to be doing a quarter again. So it was 40. What's a quarter of it? 10. We add that on. So I'm going to be doing 50 damage. Now, supposing I'm actually really clever and I whip uh, and I get grab that other yellow gem and I stick that on the end of that as well. So I actually managed to make five in a row. Well, now I'm going to be doing um, the 10 percent, the 25 percent um, will be will be times two, so it's actually going to be 50 percent, and that's going to be added on. So we're doing 40 damage, which we do, which we and which we then add on 20, uh, 50 percent of that. So we're adding on 20, so we actually end up doing 60 damage. Now I can already hear you kind of going, well, well, so what? Why do I care about these kind of damage mechanics? Well. Let me tell you why. Because sometimes when you're putting together this big, big um, string of gems, you know, you're getting fives or actually more, you know, you're actually getting sixes or sevens or connecting all of your yellows up together. Because it'd be quite easy here just to link up all of those yellow gems and make one big yellow combo. But this is the problem. You might actually be doing less damage by linking them all up than you would be if you actually kept them all separate. Because here's the mathematical bit that, that's, that you might not know. Two separate strings of yellows will do more damage than one really big long string of gems. Okay, so two threes does more than one row of six. Um, now, the rule is slightly different, of course, because if you get five in a row, then it attacks all characters. So if I had, there's only one character in front of us here, isn't there? And if we had two, then having five gems would actually attack both of them at the same time. But it's actually going to do less damage to both of them than it would if we had kind of one there. And I'll, I'll explain why. Think about this. If I had six gems in a row, what's going to happen? Well, we're going to get the initial damage for our three gems, which in Brian Williams' case is 40. And then it's going to add on 25%, 25%, 25%, which is 75%. So we're adding three quarters of that on again. Three quarters of, of 40 is 30. 40 plus 30 is 70. So those six gems in a row is going to be doing 70 damage, which sounds pretty nice. And it's also going to be doing 70 damage to every single character um, that is that that is there so if you had multiple elements it's 70 to all of them but when you get more than one um combo you also add on 25 percent. so you know when you get that um so if i if i was to get a, a combo three three yellows three greens then that's a combo so what would happen then is that both of these damage these here would have 25 percent added onto them so, uh, for argument's sake, I get three yellows and I get my three greens. The three yellows does 40 damage, and because I got a second combo here as well, it adds on 25% again. Um, so this 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 three yellows here actually ends up doing um, 50 damage because it's actually added on a quarter again. So, if I was to get th th two strings of three yellow gems, two strings of three yellow gems, this one does 40, this one does 40. But we've, because we've got two of them, that's a combo, which means that actually we're adding on ten, we're adding on twenty-five percent a quarter to both of them. So actually, this one's doing fifty because I've added on twenty-five percent, and this one's doing fifty, which means I've added on twenty-five percent. Which means altogether these two are doing a hundred damage, whereas that did seventy. A hundred damage, seventy damage. That's quite a big difference. And it gets even bigger, of course, as the more powerful your characters get, or if you had more than one character, um, for example, um, um, on there as well. Because um, imagine it was actually a character not that do, not doing 40 damage, but doing 400 damage. And then instead of doing 700 damage, you'd actually be doing um, 1,000 damage. If it was a character that was actually doing um, you know, 4,000 damage, you're actually then doing 10,000 damage instead of 7,000 damage. So these are actually pretty big mathematical differences. Um, um, and, and we can and we can see this we can see this um, absolutely in action in 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 the board here. Um, if I was if I I'm probably going to kill that guy anyway because we're probably powerful enough. But I don't know because Brian's actually a pretty low level character. But there's only one character here, so the best thing I can do is to keep my combos um, is to keep my combos um, separate from one another and don't link them up into one big combo. Make sure there's a gap between them so we get two separate ones so the combos power each other up and we get more damage. Now obviously Brian isn't powerful enough to take this guy down, so that you know. 
know the the outcome here is not the important thing but the important thing is we got more damage on that guy than we would have done had we have just gone for one big yellow thing now there's another advantage to this as well um, by going lots of little small by going two separate combos you're likely to actually disturb more of the board if you disturb more of the board more things are going to fall down if more things fall down you're more likely to get accidental combos if you get accidental combos and that's more likely to add on to the damage you've already got and that's when you start to get those combos of like 8 9 10 11 12 um, because you're disturbing more of it so it's always going to be in your interest um, to put together um, other little combos um, supposing I was using a different team let's come out of here as well um, what we've t I've talked about this before um, in, so in some of my tutorials but um, if you if you if you've got if you've got a color missing um, from your team um, by by choice or design um, so this this one here is my um, let's go for this one yellow and yellow and red team um, my yellow and red team here um, you can power them up by getting those additional combos by 25% so but if I get a string of yellows here together and a string of blacks you might kind of think well, what's the point of getting the string of blacks because getting that string of blacks is a combo and it's going to add on 25% to what the yellows would get so let's say that this yellow team here is going to get 40 damage from Brian, let's say 200 damage from Sarah Jane, let's say 500 damage from um, from the Doctor. Um, we then add all of those damages together for the three and then on another quarter again for getting, um, for getting those combos. And if there was enough yellow gems here to actually do it in two separate combos and, and get a black combo as well, that would give us double the damage plus it would be comboed up once for getting two yellows and plus it would be comboed up again um, for having a black combo there as well. Now, there's another thing to be thinking about here, which is um, some people have kind of said, well, well, shouldn't I or shouldn't I be trying to get five gems in a row every single turn? Shouldn't I be always be aiming um, to um, you know to try and attack all eminent enemies in a turn? And I'm not actually sure that that's true um, because in my experience, um, what 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 your your goal is is to keep yourself safe and to take down the enemies and the emphasis being on the keep yourself safe um bit first um, because obviously if you die um the whole mission is 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 absolutely going to be um is absolutely going to be over so let's just get a quick um green combo here um the other thing is when you're um just before i kind of get some more enemies on on the screen here um the other thing is is when you're trying to heal up um when you're healing up you're you're not attacking individual enemies you're, or you're not attacking multiple enemies um so there's never going to be a reason for you wanting to get five or six pink gems in a row you're always going to be wanting to split your pinks up into small groups so let's say you get one of those situations where your health actually goes down pretty low you're probably dead next turn unless you heal up you've got you've got nine pink gems on there what you want to do is to split those pink gems up into as many bits as possible you want a three a three and a three um, or maybe a four and a three you know something like that you want to split them up and you will get more healing than you would if you just put them into like a big wad Okay, you will get more back because you don't that the healing is never split between enemies. So you're not attacking when you heal; you're healing, and the only target is you. There's just one. Um, there's just one target. Okay, now let's look at the board here. Let's think about this because I talked about the idea is you need to protect yourself. You need to take down the enemies. Now, one some people would kind of say, well, if I attack all of them at the same time what's going to happen is is that they're all going to die um you know at the same time i'm doing damage to all of them which is true which is good but think about this one of these guys attacking by itself probably isn't going to kill you you know even if you were there you know you could actually play all day with one of them shooting you over and over and you could just heal and you could heal and you could heal and you could heal and you could heal and, and you can keep attacking him and stuff like that but, you know as the pink gems keep coming in you you're going to heal so one of these guys is not going to be a threat to you and depending on the team and depending who's attacking probably two of these guys are not going to be a threat to you possibly but it does depend who is there so think about this if you're attacking all three of them at the same time you know going bam 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 they're all going to stay alive for quite a long time and yes all of the health um, all of their health will be going down slowly but actually um, they will all be still alive so my suggestion would to be what well, to you would be depending on the situation you know is, is that you go for one at a time even if you've got an opportunity to take them all and obviously if there's a situation where um, there's uh, you're clearly outclassing them you're going to take them down easily then sure just go smash and, and take the whole out fine um, but but in most situations when you're playing at your difficulty level so in my case that's halfway through season six now you know there's difficult stuff t I think to keep yourself alive 
go one at a time. Focus on one of them. Use your use your stuns if you want. Use your time bombs, all that kind of stuff. But take that one out first, because once that one is out, he can't attack you. And using the techniques I've talked about here with the maths, what you do is you split up your combos. You're going to be doing more damage to that one single target, and when he is down, you can work on the next one. But as soon as he's gone, of course, you're not being attacked by three anymore. You're being attacked by two, which means they're a lot less dangerous to you. Again, you focus on one of them. Use all your attacks. Use your combos. Heal up when you need to. But you're going to take that second one down quicker than you would if you were attacking all three when that one's down you've got one left and now like i said earlier you know that one is not actually going to be a threat to you you know he can attack you and he can attack you but you can keep healing and it's not a problem all right so that's maths for doctor who legacy i hope it hasn't made your head spin too much i hope it's given you some nice ideas to kind of chew over in your strategies do go and check out that doctor who legacy wiki website like i said the link is in the description um right below if you'd like to check it out and do say thank you if you go over there um because it is a it's it, i think it is the best resource that i have seen so far obviously far obviously if you know of other resources let me know and i'm happy to kind of link them in my descriptions um as well so the maths in doctor who legacy will improve your gameplay Good luck fighting the bad guys. Take care. Please like the video and subscribe if you haven't already. Bye-bye.